everyone understand up to this point? A lot of people jump from here to the step that's after this, but I always like to put everything together so I can visualize. And the main reason is because I'm going to have to distribute this negative sine x. I'm going to have to multiply it by the 1, and I'm going to have to multiply it by the two items in this binomial. So it can get a little bit tricky. I'm going to need a different slide for this. So when you do your distributive, when you complete your distributive property, cos x times cos x is going to be cos squared x. Negative sine x times 1 is going to be negative sine x. And negative sine x times negative sine x is going to give me positive sine squared x. So this is applying the distributive property all over my common denominator of cos x times 1 minus sine x. So this was applying the distributive property. Okay, still looks pretty complicated. I want you guys to focus on the numerator. Do you see anything that I can put together in the numerator so that I can manipulate it or replace it? Does anyone see anything that really stands out to them? Yep. Yes, good. Cos squared x and the sine squared x. Now, they're apart right now, but if I rewrite my question, so common denominator, But I want to rewrite the question with the cos squared x and the sine. So I'm just shuffling things around. I'm going to put the sine squared x first. Let's put that in a different color so you can really see it. Sine squared x plus cos squared x because they're both positive. Sine squared plus x plus cos squared x. And then I have this leftover negative sine x. So I'm just shuffling it around. Now I'm going to replace sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So I'm going to ha go ahead and replace the 1 and rewrite everything else because there's nothing else I can replace at this point. Okay, so I've replaced my 1. Do you see anything magical that can happen right now? What can happen right now? Uh, Havuka. Yes, this 1 minus sine x can cancel with this 1 minus sine x. So I'm left with 1 over cos x. But what is 1 over cos x equal to, Jared? Yes, secant x. Secant x. 1 over cos x is equal to secant x which is equal to the right-hand side of my equation. The right-hand side of my equation. So, let's see how many steps it took us to do that. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, until we got to our final step. But do you see, it's really a puzzle. It's nothing difficult there, but it's a puzzle and it's the tricks. You, I want you to watch this seminar again because these tricks didn't take me like a couple of months to figure out when I was in grade 11. This is tricks I've learned over the years. So if you learn to focus and zone in on these little, little tricks, it's really, really going to help you. Um, I had one more problem, but what I'm going to do is do a pen cast of that problem save you some time because your brain is probably swimming right now. Uh, identities is not something you pick up like that. Some people are really, really good at them right away and some people really struggle with them. But everyone in this room will be able to do identities if you work hard enough and if you uh, pay attention to the rules that I was telling you. And don't get frustrated now because right now you only have to memorize three identities. Next year, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 maybe identities have to be memorized, okay? So stay in there. And I love this stuff, so don't be afraid to ask for help. We are done.